You know, honestly, I didn't even realize what the exact definition of this was. An accessory is an object or device that is not essential in itself, but adds to the beauty, convenience, or effectiveness of something else. And that's the purpose of this week's video, is to discuss 13 landscape photography accessories under $100. Now, some of the things that are not included in this list are things like camera bodies or camera lenses, camera backpacks, tripods, ball heads, for two reasons. One, all of those items are well over $100. And two, those items aren't considered accessories. Those are all essential pieces of gear. You've got to have that stuff for landscape photography. So the accessories we are going to talk about today, these are, you know, nice to have items. These are not must have items. These are all accessories that I've used for a couple of years now. And I think they're some of the best on the market today. Now I rated these in order of price. So item number 13 is going to be the most expensive accessory on this list. And item number one is going to be the least expensive accessory on the list. So to jump right into it, number 13 is the Samsung portable 500 gigabyte SD drive. Now I use this for travel and it's absolutely perfect. 500 gigabyte, no, it's not the, the largest storage capacity, especially in today's terms. There's SSD drives that are substantially larger than that, but I really don't need that much storage. This is absolutely perfect for what I need whenever I'm on the road or I'm on location. I use this as my travel drive. And I put all my look, all my photos and video from a specific trip as I'm shooting them on this drive. And then when I get home, load them all on the computer and then wipe the drive out. And then it's completely empty for, a, for another trip. I use a Lacey or Lacey, I'm not hundred percent sure exactly how you pronounce it, but I use those drives more for long-term storage when I'm at home. But when I'm traveling, this Samsung drive is perfect for me. It is so tiny, very thin, lightweight, rugged, it's durable. And it, you, you can literally put it in your front pocket or your back pocket. It's just very small and it's substantially smaller than the, uh, the Lacey or, or Lacey drives. So I'm a big fan of these. I spent $130 on this drive two years ago, and now you can get these for under $90. So definitely a good investment. Now coming in at number 12 and quite possibly my favorite accessory, oh, fell on the ground. It's this NRS boundary sock. And if you're not familiar with what this is, they're, uh, they're water shoes or water socks. They're fantastic, fantastic, very durable. Keep your feet dry, keep your feet warm. You can get into extremely cold water and stand there for a, a very long time and be completely comfortable. And the best part about these, it has this like elastic area at the top. I'm actually not 100% sure what it's made of, but it creates a seal around your leg. That way water can't pour into it. You know, if you've ever worn water boots and you've gone in the water too far, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where all the water pours into your boot. Now you're walking around with two small swimming pools attached to your feet, which is very uncomfortable. But this right here eliminates that from happening to you. So these are fantastic. Definitely worth the money. I use these all the time when I'm shooting near water. And it actually helps my photography out too because I'm much more apt to get into the water when I have these with me. And I love getting into the water when, especially if a river or a stream where the flow is coming at you, get into the water, get your camera low to the actual current. It really helps you to get those immersive um, images where the water's flowing towards your camera. And having this, these types of accessories with you helps you to feel more comfortable or confident to actually get in the water. So these NRS boundary socks are definitely worth the money. Now, coming in at number 11 are these Valorette Photography Gloves. I believe these are called the Markoff Edition. And what I like about them, one, I think they look pretty cool. They've got a pretty slick look to them. But my favorite aspect, besides the fact that they keep your hands warm, is that the thumb and the index finger can be exposed. And it has these little magnetic, little, I don't know, magnetic clips, I guess to flip to actually hold this area back. That way it's not, you know, you don't have to keep fumbling around with it. You just flip it back and you're good to go. And it just makes, you know, making those camera adjustments that much easier. You don't have to pull your glove off every single time. You also don't have to try and make camera adjustments with gloves on because that's next to impossible. So these are some of the best photography gloves I've ever used. It's got this nice kind of non-slip surface on the actual palm just to make you feel a little bit more confident when you're, when you're handling things, especially like lenses or your camera body. It's got this nice zipper on the outside that you can put an SD card or a hand warmer in there as well. But these are great, best photography gloves I've ever used. And Valorette makes a bunch of different types of gloves. I'm pretty sure they are all under $100. So really any kind of glove you get from them is gonna 
it's going to do the trick. Good investment as well. Now, coming in at number 10 is this Hoya Circular Polarizer. Now, this is not my main polarizer, but this is a great option if you're on a budget. This right here, you can get on Amazon right now for $53. It's a great quality. The results are fantastic. Hoya is a great brand. And a circular polarizer is one of those things that is so close to being an essential piece of kit, but it's just not. You, got, you don't have to have a polarizer, but man, is it fantastic if you do have one. And if you're on a budget, check this one out. For $53, you really can't beat it. This is a, a, a steal in my opinion. Now, coming in at number nine is this Black Diamond Head Torch. I think this is called the Black Diamond Storm. I don't do much astrophotography, but I find myself when I'm shooting sunrise, I always get to look to the location well before the sun actually rises. So I'm hiking there in the dark. When I'm shooting sunset, I always stay obviously through sunset, but I shoot the blue hour, I shoot twilight, and I'm also uh, hiking back to the car at the end of it all in the complete darkness. And I would much rather a headlamp as opposed to a flashlight you have to hold with your hands for obvious reasons, you're, you're more hands-free. And this is a great one to go with right here. Good construction, it's waterproof. Well, I don't wanna say it's waterproof, I think it is. I've dropped it in water and it works completely fine. Super bright. It has um, uh, different settings for uh, brightness. I think it has three levels of uh, brightness to uh, you know, make it super bright or the dim it. It's got the red light on there as well. But um, good quality. Anything from Black Diamond is going to be pretty good. They have a bunch of different headlamps that they sell. They're all under $50 and really doesn't matter which one you get. They're all going to be fantastic. But a good solid headlamp is a, is a tremendous accessory to get. Now coming in at number eight is a good set of tripod spikes. I went a little overboard with these. These are from Really Right Stuff for my Really Right Stuff tripod. These are almost $96, but you don't have to spend near that much on these. I've seen them on Amazon for around $20, and they're, they're great for obvious reasons. You can really just dig your tripod into whatever shooting surface uh, you're on just to create a little bit more stability, and these are fantastic if you're shooting in a, in a high wind environment. So I'm a big fan of having multiple different kinds of feet that you can attach to your tripod, but these spikes might be my favorite. So um, definitely take a look at uh, getting some tripod spikes if you don't already, don't already have some. Now coming in at number seven is this Pelican SD card case. I've had a lot of different SD card cases, but this one is by far my favorite. All the ones I've had in the past are, are soft-sided, they're not waterproof, but this one is great. Super, super tough, durable, waterproof, like I mentioned. I always uh, have my used SD cards flipped over and then the empty ones flipped up with the sticker showing. But, you know, there's not much to say about an SD card case, but this one is definitely the best in my opinion. Very affordable and arguably it protects the most important piece of equipment that we have and that's the SD card because that's where all of our images are, are stored on. So I think you definitely want to get a, uh, a good solid SD card case to keep those safe. Now what number are we on? Number six is the Shimoda small accessory pouch. Shimoda makes these in a duffel, couple different sizes. This of course is the small. I love the fact that it's this bright blue color. And it has a, you know, a compartment on this side. It's got a large compartment right here that it kind of expands out to make it a little bit thicker. But this is great. It's also got the clear side on the back. But what I use this for, I put all my Fuji batteries, my Sony batteries, battery chargers, anything to charge my computer, my phone, my watch, anything related to power goes inside this little, this little pouch. That way, whenever I need anything related to power, I can just grab the bright blue bag that's in my luggage or that's in my backpack and it's just really easy to find. And it just helps me to stay more organized. I don't have to dig into small little pockets inside my bags. I can just grab this and I know that if what I'm looking for is associated with power, it's gonna be inside this pack. Now, coming in at number five is this small moleskin case. It's a hard shell case. I use this to keep all of uh, my tools. So any kind of Allen wrench, little tiny flathead screwdriver, a carabiner, backup tripod plates, these little um, peak design anchor points, any kind of tool that I have, I put inside of this. And much like the Shimoda case, I love the fact that this is this neon orange. Once again, very easy to find within my bag. I don't have to look into small compartments to find anything. If it's a tool that I'm looking for, I need to grab this and it's gonna have exactly what I need. So I think this is a, a great accessory as well. I think you can get these for just under $20. So definitely worth the money. 
Now coming in at number four is a is a backpack rain cover, but I don't use it for my for my bag. So what I do, this is the one that I use. This came with my Atlas pack, and you can buy these kind of um, um, camera bag rain covers online for as cheap as uh, maybe five or ten dollars, as much as twenty five dollars. They they don't cost a whole lot, but I use these to cover up my my camera when I, once I have my composition set. If I'm shooting near a waterfall where there's you know, water spray or near the coast where there's sea spray or maybe it's raining and I have my composition set but I'm not actually exposing images at that moment, I cover my entire setup with this. And I like to use this big cover just because it's easy to, to put on and to take off. I've bought a, uh, a camera rain cover from Peak Design and it was one of those ones that fits your camera like a glove, but it was just so hard to put on my camera. It was so hard to take off my camera. It was just way too much to fiddle around with. And I like to use a, a backpack rain cover as a cover for my camera whenever I'm on location and there's any kind of rain or water around. So I think that's a great solution. And if you're on, on a budget, you can use, dropped, this. You can get a, I don't know, a gajillion of these. These are just, these are shower cap covers for your head so you don't get your hair wet. But this is also another good solution as well to just cover up your camera and your lens whenever there's rain around just to kind of keep all water off of your uh, your lens elements and the best part about these things you can just wad them up and it takes next to no room in your bags it doesn't take up any space at all and it doesn't really weigh anything either now coming in at number three and these things are awesome at nine dollars and 94 cents from think tank photo these are called red whips and they're basically just amazing cable ties. You can just wrap them around any kind of cable, cinch them down, and it keeps all of your cables organized. I can't stand having cables loose all over the place. It just, it makes, it sends my OCD into to warp speed, but these are amazing. The most simple basic invention, but they're just absolutely tremendous. You can get 10 of these for just under $10 and they're, they're amazing. I don't know how many of these I have. I got about probably 20 of these laying all over the place, but these are great for just overall cable management. Now coming in at number two, this is no surprise, I think everybody probably has these, but it's these um, rocket blowers. Great for cleaning off stuff off your lens. This is the one from Giotto's, I think it was $8. Definitely, I think this is a must have accessory, not essential, but it's pretty close to it. It's almost like a polarizer. This is great for just cleaning off your camera, getting dust and dirt and sand off of the little nooks and crannies in your camera, but most importantly, getting any kind of dust or whatever off of your actual lens itself. Very durable. This is the one that I've had for years. I don't even really know how you would break one of these, but they, they do last a long time and definitely worth the $8. Now coming in, at, coming in at number one in the cheapest accessory on this list, it, I believe it's $7.90 I found these for. And it's Zeiss microfiber cloths. I keep all of mine in this Peak Design bag. I think Peak Design, or they used to give you these little pouches with pretty much every one of their items you purchase but I put all of these Zeiss lens cloths inside of there. And these are the best lens cloths. They're a little expensive, almost $8 for one, or is it $8 for two? Regardless of what it is, but it's a great quality. They last forever. And when it comes to caring for your lens, especially the glass on your lens, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's too much to spend a couple extra dollars just to keep um, that uh, scratch free and keep water off of it. And I use those constantly. I'm always wiping my lens off and I keep this in my back pocket with me in the situation where there's a lot of water spraying around or it's raining outside. But that's the cheapest accessory of this list. So those are the 13 accessories under $100. And I hope you're able to get something that uh, get an idea of an accessory maybe you're looking for uh, to add to your kit. I'll put links to everything in the description below. They'll all be Amazon affiliate links. So if you end up buying the product through my link, I'll get an oh so tiny commission from that, but it all adds up and definitely helps me and the channel out. And if you have any questions, as always, definitely leave those in the comment section below. And I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. If you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Bye.